Welcome to Neal Public Library's Summer Reading Program. My name is Jan Hill. I am a member of the Library's Board of Trustees, and I love books, particularly picture books. And I selected two today to read to you, and the first one is called Off We Go, and it is by Jane Yolen and illustrated by Laurel Moak, and Off We Go. Tip toe, tippity toe, over the leaves and down below, off to grandma's house we go, sings little mouse. Hip hop, hippity hop, what's this gonna be? Through the slime and over the slop, off to grandma's, never stop, sings little frog. Dig deep, diggity deep, down with day is dark as sleep. Off to grandma's house I creep, sings little mole. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> Slither slee, slithery slee, down the branch and around the tree. Off to grandma's house goes me, sings little snake. Scritch, scratch, scritchity scratch. Directly from the egg I hatch. Then off to grandma's house I dash, sings little duck. Creep crawl, creepity crawl. What's this one? From the web and down the wall. Off to grandma's house, free fall, sings little spider. Here's where I need a little help, okay? Tip-toe, tippity-toe, you said. Tip-toe, tippity-toe, hip-hop, hippity-hop. Tip-toe, tippity-toe, hippity-hop, hippity-hop. Dig deep, diggity deep, here they all go. Okay, again, tip-toe, tippity-toe, hip-hop, hippity-hop, dig deep, diggity-deep, slither slee, slithery slee. Last time, tip-toe, tippity-toe, hip-hop, hippity-hop, dig deep, diggity-deep. Slither slee, slithery slee. Scratch, scratch. Scratchity scratch. Creep, crawl. Creepity crawl. Wherever grandma's house is found, in hole, in tree, or underground, in web, or bog, or in a nest, why, grandma's house is always best. Off we go. The other book that I selected for you is about rhinos, and I picked it because who doesn't love rhinoceroses, right? This is a book, it's called Rhinos Don't Eat Pancakes, and it's by, uh, the author is uh, Anna Kemp, and the illustrator is Sarah Ogilvie. And I picked this one just because it's fun. Do you ever get the feeling that your mom and dad aren't listening to a word you say? You do? Then you are just like Daisy. Her mom and dad never listen. Daisy could tell them that her, their hair was on fire, that the dog had eaten the mailman, but they would just nod and say, that's nice, dear, or tell your gran, or can't you see I'm on the phone? So when one day Daisy had something really important to say, guess what? Nobody listened. So this is what happened. Daisy was eating her breakfast 
when a big purple rhino strolled into the kitchen. That's right, a big purple rhino. It is as big as a bus and as purple as a plum. It was also hungry. So it took a chomp of Daisy's pancake and went upstairs. Mom, Mom, Daisy cried. There's a big... Oh, tell your dad, said Mom. I'll, he'll catch it in a mug and throw it out the window. What does Mom think it is? What are you thinking? Dad, Dad, she said Daisy. There's a big, there's a huge... Shh, said Dad. The spider can wait. It's not a spider, Daisy shouted. It's a big purple rhinoceros. But as usual, nobody listened. Meanwhile, the rhino made himself right at home. Daisy saw him in the hall and glimpsed him in the yard. She spied him in the bathroom. But every time she tried to tell her parents, they'd say, shh, Daisy, can't you see we're busy? Daisy's parents were busy all week. So what would you do if you saw a rhinoceros? What would you do if your parents weren't listening? Here's what Daisy did. Daisy said, I think I'll talk to the rhino. Soon they became good friends. They played ring toss and made pizza together, and the rhino tickled Daisy until she thought she would burst. But Daisy's parents didn't notice until the pancakes ran out. Who ate all the pancakes? Yelled Dad, looking straight at Daisy. It was the rhino, she said. Rhinos don't eat pancakes. This one does, cried Daisy. I saw him in the kitchen. A rhino, said Mom. In the kitchen, said Dad. Yes, said Daisy, exactly. Mom and Dad roared with laughter. What's next, they roared. A shark in the toilet, a polar bear in the fridge. There he is, look. Daisy yelled. But Mom and Dad were so busy laughing, they didn't even notice. Come on, Rhino, said Daisy. I've had enough of this. The Rhino tickled Daisy with his horn, but she was far too glum to giggle. Mom and Dad never listen, she sighed. They are always a million miles away. The Rhino sighed deeply through his big purple nostrils. I'm sorry, Rhino, said, I'm sorry, Rhino, said Daisy. Your family's a million miles away too, isn't it? The Rhino nodded, and a little lilac tear rolled down his cheek. Poor Rhino. That night, Daisy sat up thinking of ways to get Rhino back home to his family. He was too heavy for a hot air balloon. And he was too big for Daisy's rubber dinghy. She thought about lending him her bike, but the helmet would never fit. The next morning, Mom and Dad had a surprise. We're taking you to the zoo, said Mom, so you can see a real rhino. What do you think of that? Dad grinned. Daisy thought it was a stupid idea when there was already a perfectly good rhino sitting on the couch. But she didn't say so. What was the point? Nobody would listen. At the zoo, Daisy saw yellow giraffes and she saw bright red parrots and she saw, she saw orange and black tigers and green grass snakes. But she couldn't help thinking about poor purple rhino. Hurry up, said Daisy. Hurry up, Daisy, said Mom. The rhinos are this way. Oh, and look at this. What is this? A big sign at the zoo. And what does it say? It says, missing big purple rhino. He likes pancakes. 
If found, please call the zoo. Cripes, gasped Mom. Well, that explains the pancakes, gasped Dad. Mom, Dad, and Daisy rushed back home. And guess what they saw when they got there? That's right. The biggest, purplest rhinoceros in town. What did I tell you, Daisy said, grinning from ear to ear. I'm calling the zoo, said Mom. The rhino looked startled. No, said Daisy, not the zoo. He needs to get back to his family and they're a million miles away. Well, we better get a move on it, said Dad. The next flight's a million miles away that leaves this afternoon. The rhino packed his suitcase while Daisy found his hat. Then they all pushed his big purple bottom into the back of the car and they drove to the airport. I'll miss you, said Daisy as the rhino boarded the plane. The rhino gave her a big purple hug. He would miss her too. Back at home, Daisy began to feel lonely again. Who would listen to her now? But little did she realize that everything was about to change. Tell us about the rhino, Daisy, said Mom. Yes, said Dad. Tell us about that big purple pancake-eating pancake rhino. So Daisy told them about the ring toss and the pizza and the tickles. And guess what? They listened and listened until she had completely run out of words. It was wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us? Asked Mom as she tucked Daisy into bed that night. Daisy looked out onto the landing. No, that's all for now, said Daisy, smiling. Night, night. The pink polar bear would have to wait till tomorrow. And that's the end.